So in today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can use Inkscape version 48 to create some Chrome style text similar to what you see here on my screen. And this is a, a concept that could be applied not just to text. It could, this could be applied to anything else you may be creating in Inkscape. So if you'd like to follow along with this tutorial using the same font that I'm using, I've provided a link to it in the description. So if you'd like to use this particular font, it's called Hamburger Heaven. Go ahead and download that font and install it before you open up Inkscape and then you'll be good to get started. Otherwise, you can use whatever font you'd like. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll open up a new window. Let's open up a new document. And we'll click on the Align and Distribute Objects menu to open that up. Make sure you have Last Selected chosen. Then we'll click on the Edit Objects, Colors, Gradient, and Stroke. We'll open that up. Then let's go to View, Zoom, One to One, and make sure from this list you have Custom selected from the View from the View menu. You're going to want Custom selected to follow along with what I'm doing. Then we'll go to File, Document Properties. We'll uncheck these two boxes and then close that out. So what we're going to do first is we're going to create some text. We're going to click on our uh, Create and Edit Text Objects button, and then go ahead and click on the canvas and just type in whatever text you'd like to use for the sake of this tutorial I'm just gonna write Chrome and then you can select your font up here with this view and select font family button you click on that and I'm gonna go find that font hamburger heaven there it is click apply and then close out of that and we can come up here to where it says uh, spacing between letters let's click that up arrow let's space them out a little bit you're gonna want to give them a little bit of breathing room in order for this to take effect. Okay, I think that works. Then we can go to our arrow and click on that. And then while holding control on your keyboard, click and drag one of these arrows to enlarge that. We're gonna make that pretty big. And then we are going to change this from a text item to an actual vector object. So we're gonna to go to path, object to path. Then we're gonna ungroup it with this button right here. And then we're gonna go up to path, Union. Okay, now the first thing we're going to want to do, make sure you have it colored in black and make sure that the opacity is all the way up. So the first thing we'll do is we will click on our linear gradient button. We'll give that a linear gradient and come down here to where it says edit. We're going to click on that. And from this drop down menu, let's click on that. Let's go to the second stop, the second line right there. And make sure you have the HSL tab open. By default, it's going to open RGB you're going to want HSL. That's what I use. So come down to this, this line where it says A. Let's click and drag that all the way up to the right. And then come up here to where it says Add Stop. We're going to click that three times. We're going to click one, two, three. And that's going to give us a total of five stops right here. So for the very first one, we're going to click on that. And we're going to come down to the L line. And we're going to make that all the way, we're going to make that all the way white, all the way to the right. Then for the second one, let's go down to the second stop. Let's make that gray, maybe... Um, a little on the lighter shade, a little on the lighter side, maybe uh, 171, that should work. Then we'll come down to the third stop. We'll make that all the way white again. And then for the fourth stop, we're gonna leave that black. And then for the fifth stop, the one on the very bottom, we're gonna click on that and let's make that white. And then once you're done with that, we can close out of that menu for now and come over here to where it says, uh, create and edit gradients. If you don't see this button on your screen, there should be a little arrow in the bottom left corner here. If you click on that area and on that arrow, it'll bring up a menu and, and one of the menus, uh, one of the lists, one of the things in that list should be gradient. So you go ahead and click on that and it'll bring up a gradient, our little gradient handles right here. So let's take this box on the left and let's click and drag this up to the top. And then let's take this circle on the right and let's click and drag this to the bottom. And then hold your control key so it goes straight up and down. If you're not holding control, it's going to be a little tilted. We want it to go straight up and down. Let's bring this straight to the bottom like that. And let's take this first, uh, this first stop right here. Let's click and drag this down to about there. That's our black band right there. We're going to bring that down. And then we're going to click on this one right here, this white one. We're going to bring this down to about here. And then we'll click this very uh, first one over here. And we'll bring this about halfway through, kind of like that. So it should look something like this. And once you've gotten there, go ahead and click on the arrow again. We're going to right click this and go to duplicate. And we're going to turn that black. And then we're going to lower this one step. So come up to the button where it says lower selection one step. Click that once. And let's go over to our stroke paint tab and let's turn that on. 
And then let's come over to stroke style. Let's try giving that an eight point stroke. So type in eight and hit enter. Okay, that should work. So we'll use an eight point stroke and then we'll go to path, stroke to path. So then we'll come back over to the fill tab and we're gonna do the same thing we did previously. We're gonna give this a linear, a linear gradient. We're gonna click on that and we're gonna to go to edit. And we're gonna come up here uh, to this, uh, the second stop right here. We're going to go to the A column. We're going to make. We're going to slide that all the way to the right, and let's click uh, add stop three times. So one, two, three, and then for this top one, let's make this um, maybe uh, 79. We want it to be like a darker gray, but not too dark. 79. Let's try 90. We'll do 90, and then we'll go to the second one right here. We'll make this white, and then we'll go to the third one. We'll do the same thing. We'll make it 90. I'll just type in 90 actually so it's consistent. And then we'll go to the fourth one. We'll make this white. And for this last one, we're going to use 90. So we'll type in 90, hit enter. And then once you've done that, it should look like this, your little menu. Once you've done that, go ahead and exit out of that menu and we're good to go. So let's go back to our gradient button over here and click on this. And let's take this uh, square and let's bring this to the top. And we'll take this circle and bring this to the bottom. And once you get it down here, hold control on your keyboard to bring it straight down like that. Then we're going to take this first, uh, this first stop right here. We're going to try to line this up with the black band from our previous, uh, from, from our uh, layer on top. And then we'll take this, this next one. We'll try to line this up with the white band. Then we'll take this middle one, this, the, this first one actually, and line it up with the, uh, the, gray, the gray band in the middle there. So it should be, the positioning should be something like that. Then we're good to go. So let's go ahead and click on the arrow again. Let's click on the very top, the top layer, the text. And let's right click that and go to duplicate. And let's turn that red. And let's come over here to opacity and let's slide that in half. Now let's go to path and hit inset. And it should end up with something like this. It's going to make this text slightly thinner than the text below it. And then we'll go over here to our Create Circles and Ellipses. We'll click on that. And let's go ahead and just click and drag on the canvas to create an ellipse going over this text, kind of like that. And let's come over to the Stroke tab. Let's turn that off. We don't need that. Come back over to the Fill tab. And let's actually make this blue so we can get a better view of what we're doing. And then we'll come back up to the arrow. And let's let's like shrink this down. Let's make it a very very uh, like a very thin ellipse. We want it to make it look like it's almost a straight line going through the text here, but it's not quite a straight line. It's got a very slight curve to it, like you see on my screen. So go ahead and make that make it look like that, kind of like that. And then afterwards, hold Shift and click on the red text we just created, and let's center that up on the vertical axis with that button right there. Okay. Now let's click off of the graphic to deselect everything and let's take this blue circle and let's hold control on the keyboard and let's click and drag it down so that the bottom edge of it is going right over that uh, black band on the first layer of text that we had. Maybe about right there. I'm going to make this a little taller. You want to make sure the top portion of the text fits all the way within the oval so try not to like, try not to make like where you have anything sticking out like that. You want everything encased in that oval. And then once you have that, hold shift and let's click on the red text so you have the blue oval and the red text both selected. And then we'll go to path, intersection. And we're gonna bring the opacity on that all the way up. And we're going to click, uh, to make this white, we're gonna turn that white, so go ahead and click on that. And then we're gonna come up here to where it says linear gradient. We're gonna click on that. And let's come back to our gradient handle. And let's take this square right here. Let's take and let's click and drag this over just above where that oval that we created began. We're going to put it right up there and we're going to take this handle, this uh, circle handle right here and bring it straight above it and hold control and bring it up to about maybe uh, maybe about there and that should do it. All right, we'll come back to our arrow. Let's click and drag over the whole thing and let's group it together with that button. Then we'll right click this and go to duplicate and then we'll ungroup that and let's go to path union and then we will click on uh, we'll, we'll make this black and let's lower this one step by clicking that button let's go ahead and lower it one step 
And then using your arrow keys, you can just you could just click the down arrow, bring it down a little bit, maybe three three steps, and then bring it right one, two, three, four, maybe four steps, kind of like that. And then for the blur, we're gonna we're gonna give this a blur, maybe a two point blur, something like that. Two. Let's see how one looks. Maybe three. Yeah, we could do something like that. Maybe like a three-point blur, and you can come to the opacity. Maybe drop that down a little bit so it isn't so it isn't so uh, abrupt like that. And there you have it. That's how you can use Inkscape to create a chrome, uh, like a chrome metallic style text or anything for that matter. You can do this with a ring or a circle or a star or a square. So that's how you can do that. And if you have any questions or if I messed anything up in this tutorial, just let me know, and I'll gladly help you out. Thanks again for watching.